Jai Hind, my name is Dr. Ashutosh Pandey and in this video we are going to talk about Earth Day and in particular we are going to discuss the ways in which we can do something for our mother nature. So let's get started. Our culture is rich and we have a much of abundance of wisdom available to us which is hiding behind certain scriptures and books. Here, this quote from Atharva Veda, Matha Bhumi Putroham Pratibhya, Earth is my mother and I am her child, signifies a strong bond and relationship between us and Mother Nature, the Earth. So, if we have this sense of belonging, then why today we are striving for protection of Earth? What went wrong? What was that in which we failed to understand this strong bond and relationship among us? So before going to any such details, let us first talk about a brief idea of Earth Day. So Earth Day is an annual event held every year on 22nd of April. It was first held in 1970 and it now includes a wide range of events which is coordinated globally by earthday.org which includes around 1 billion people in around 193 countries around the globe. Let us now take a look at history of Earth Day. In the decade of 1960s, Americans were consuming vast amounts of leaded gas through massive and inefficient vehicles. They were actually doing two things. They were emitting a lot of pollution and they were indulged in Vietnam War. The industries were emitting smoke and sludge with little fear of the consequences. Air pollution was commonly accepted as the smell of prosperity. America was largely unaware of environmental concerns. Then Rachel Carson wrote a book called The Silent Spring which brought certain changes in the total scenario. So what happened next? The inception of Earth Day. So when we talk about inception of Earth Day, Senator Gaylord Nelson is given much of the credit to start this event. He is also considered as the father of Earth Day. He was concerned about deteriorating situation of environment in United States. In January 1969, he and many others witnessed the consequences of massive oil spills in Santa Barbara of California. Senator Nest Nelson wanted to infuse the energy of student anti-war protest with an emerging public consciousness about air and water pollution. So at that time, students were agitated and were doing anti-war protest in uh, against the Vietnam War which was happening in that particular era and so on 22nd of April which was chosen uh, a weekday which was falling between spring break and final exams so that so many students uh, can participate this particular event was organized and it was of a great success. So uh, in the spring of 1970, Senator Gaylord Nelson is given credit of creation of Earth Day. 20 million Americans demonstrated on different US streets and it worked, how it worked? Later in December, a new federal agency was created to tackle environmental issues in USA and that was US EPA, the United States Environmental Protection Agency which was a big breakthrough in the history. Earth Day, Birth Day. They rhyme, right? And that is the story behind the naming of Earth Day. Julian Koenig, who coined this term Earth Day, has done it on his own birthday. So later he started uh, is, later he stated that he was inspired by the fact that Earth Day rhymes with birthday and it was actually his birthday when 22nd of uh, April was chosen as the Earth Day in 1970. So yeah, this is the story. 
Since its inception in 1970, Earth Day has traveled a long way and it has now covered around 50 or more years. In 1990, Earth Day goes global, uh, mobilizing 200 million people in 141 countries. In the new millennium, 2000, Earth Day leverages the power of digital media to build millions of local conversations and it involved around 180 countries worldwide. The main focus in the new millennium was global warming and push for a clean energy. In 2010, the main focus was shifted to climate change and climate crisis. The world was divided into two diaspora. One was climate change believers while the others were climate change deniers. And the time was crucial to make a decision on climate crisis and Earth Day played an important role. In 2020, which marked 50 years of Earth Day, here a billion people were mobilized throughout the world and our planet was given the priority. 2020 saw a lockdown, the worldwide lockdown. And during this, many animals were seen roaming on roads freely. When they were roaming on road freely, what does that signify? That that place belongs to them also. Not only domesticated animals, but also the wild animals were seen in many places throughout the world. As you can see, a herd of fallow deer graze on the lawns in front of housing estate in London on 4th of April in 2020. These are not domesticated animals. And this is one example, there are many. So what does that signify? So during the lockdown, what happened? When humans were not there, they, that means the wild animals, started to reclaim their space. I emphasize their space. Yes, we human beings are living at the cost of some other species because our population worldwide is much more than what it can be sustained naturally on earth. But yes, with the help of science and technology, we are surpassing that limit. But the lockdowns and other things actually makes us think about our situation in this present scenario of COVID-19 situation. When sometimes we feel helpless and sometimes hopeless too. But science and technology has done something and something has to be done by us for this nature. What is that? Let us see. So there are two approaches, egocentric and ecocentric. Egocentric approach can also be said to be anthropocentric approach. Anthropocentric means human being at the center, at the top. That means human is given priority over all other species and his need, his desires are to be fulfilled by all natur natural resources. What you have seen in China that they actually eat wild animals and what they do, they actually go much closer to the wild and that can bring zoonotic viruses to our environment. Not only that, that is one aspect. Here we don't consider any other species for their rights. We just over exploit everything. We just think that whatever is there is for us. And that approach is actually bad for us. How can it be controlled or how can it be uh, surpassed? So we can have a ecocentric approach. 
Here we consider ourselves as part of this ecosystem. We are just part and parcel of this ecosystem. We are not above it. So whatever is there is there for our use in the required quantities only, not for our overconsumption as signifies by egocentric approach. So Mahatma Gandhi once also said that the world has enough for everyone's need but not enough for in everyone's greed. So we should think about this aspect. Here, the same thing was given to us in Ishopanishad and in Yajur Veda. So this shloka signifies that, O oh human, the entire world, static as well as dynamic, is pervaded by Ishwar the Supreme Lord and hence enjoy the pleasure in a detached manner. Do not be greedy. This wealth does not belong to anyone. Same thing from the past. It was known to us. So the question arises that what can I do for Mother Earth? Let us find the answer. So what can we do? We can do five things for Mother Earth. These five things are not comprehensive and not complete. But yes, they will actually cover a lot many things that can be followed easily and if done can have a difference. So what are these five things? And also uh, one more thing I would like to add here that I am actually uh, telling you the sustainable development goal number which is also related to these aspects so when you follow these things you will help your country to achieve or rather uh, you will uh, narrow the difference of achievement with the sustainable development goals to be achieved by 2030 so there are 17 sustainable development goals and here the numbers are given 6, 12 here in this case when you talk about conservation of water which is the first thing and goal number 6 is clean water and sanitation while 12 is responsible consumption and production. So when you uh, see the fourth point here you will find how this is also covered. So let us see. Conserve water, don't waste it, stop leakages, stop drinking bottled water. Yeah. When you stop drinking bottled water, instead use tapped filtered water, you will actually stop a ton of plastic waste which is generated in the process of uh, generation of plastic for the bottles. Okay. So you will also help in achieving the 12 numbered sustainable development goal. The second one is car or no car. So if you can stay away from road for two days in a week. What will happen if you do so? You can reduce greenhouse gas emission by an average of 721 kilogram per year. This calculation was done by EPA and is available to their website. Teleworking or work from home can be done. This will actually significantly reduce the traffic on road, the vehicular emission, the noise pollution, the consumption of oil, so many things, consumption of energy in the offices. So yes, work from home can benefit the environment. Maintaining your car on a regular basis, it can reduce the emissions. So it is also very important. Electric car, yes, but of, uh, only if you can uh, have a charging point which is sustainable. How? What you expect from a car which is electric? Oh, eco-friendly, right. But what actually we are getting? So we see that the coal-fired power stations are actually responsible for electricity generation in our country. And if you are charging the, the car from that particular thing, you are actually using that coal and that is no more green 
okay so yes electric car if the charging is sustainable the third thing is walk use bicycle or take public transport walking and biking are obvious ways to reduce greenhouse gases plus you will get some good cardio and burn some calories while you do so so it is a good exercise also if possible you should use the local public transport you can carpool also and in terms of sustainable development goals these things will help in achieving goal number 13 and goal number 3 point number 4 is reduce reuse and recycle the cardinal principle of environment suppose if an office building of around 7000 workers recycled all of its office paper for one year it would be the equivalent of taking almost 400 cars off the road again this calculation is available at epa website so this is a big thing along with that what you can do is take reusable bags to the grocery shop instead of asking ki are bhul gaye aaj to polythene mein hi de do bhaiya no just go with reusable bags so that you don't have to ask for polythene bags single use plastics are the single most dangerous thing for our for our environment avoid using disposable plates spoons glass cups and napkins these days in covid 19 situation sometimes we have to use certain uh, disposable things but in normal conditions we should avoid use of these disposable thermocol or some other glass or napkins things okay these are dangerous for our environment mostly they are not recyclable and they are not degradable easily so take care of it you should buy products that are made of recycled materials fifth and the last point of today's video is eat sustainable food large scale food production accounts for as much as 25% of the greenhouse gas emissions which is a big number so choosing food from a farmer who is actually conserving the natural resource and have as little impact on the land as possible so it is better to buy from him rather than some other processed food from some other uh, big agency located far away from your home so it is better to buy from a local farmer eating more of plant based food like whole grain vegetables fruit and nuts and less of animal based food because plants are in the trophic level which is lower as compared to the animals i have discussed it in one video which i have given the link in the i button you can see and some other reasons are there so that the vegetables and plant based food are more sustainable as compared to processed food and animal based food grow your own fruit and vegetables you can have your own rooftop garden kitchen garden etc and you can use your uh, spent water from your uh, um, ro purifiers you know some water is always wasted so you can use that water in that particular garden for irrigation so you will save the water as well as you will have your own uh, fruits and vegetables which are organic in nature when grown at your own home so thanks for watching this video till end you can share this video with the students you can like this video if you have liked it really if you don't don't need to do that and you can subscribe to this channel for more such videos thank you very much jai hind